Scenario. I'm walking three to four hours on a trail I've hiked in the past. The weather report indicates possible afternoon mountain thunderstorms, so I started early. I eventually move into an open area above the tree line. I see distant lightning. I do not want to be in an exposed area during a thunderstorm, so I make a quick retreat. My goal now is to return quickly to the trailhead. I also make a mental note that there's a primitive camping area with shelter along the return route. The storm is moving fast, and I'm caught in high winds, heavy rain, and ice pellets. I divert to the shelter. It's very cold. I'm soaked. Time to think survival. Size up. Dropped into a challenging situation or even a crisis, the first thing to do is a scene size up. That is, a mental evaluation of hazards that pose immediate bodily threat. For example, avoiding a lightning strike in an open area. Immediate threats dealt with. Focus on the longer term issue of preserving the ability to think clearly. Thinking clearly allows one to set a goal and persist with a challenge. For example, making the decision to heed an approaching storm and hike back to the trailhead, but keeping in mind a shelter along the way. And if one is not solo, then the chances of success improve. By the numbers, to think clearly, we need to adequately protect ourselves to maintain a healthy body temperature, stay hydrated, and eventually find food. Too cold, and we suffer from hypothermia, causing shivering, clumsiness, and then confusion. Removing wet clothing and warming the body core with a source of heat, such as a fire, can help lessen hypothermia. At the other extreme, too hot, and we deal with the hyperthermia spectrum, that can present as headache, muscle spasms, and confusion. Minimizing physical activity in hot, humid conditions, seeking shade, and staying hydrated can lessen hyperthermia-related problems. We stay hydrated by drinking water. A water loss of only 2% of our body weight results in both confusion and impaired physical performance. The amount of water we need to drink varies with the environment and physical activity. We can monitor dehydration by mouth dryness, thirst, dark-colored urine, and pinching the skin on the back of one's hand to see if it tents and is slow to return to normal. Food is not usually an immediate need in a short-term survival situation. So to think clearly and deal with a challenge, we find personal safety, maintain a workable body temperature, and stay hydrated. These would be essentials for a short-term, meaning a few hours, last-ditch survival kit. The kit must be pocketable, along with a small knife.